having junior church this morning too with me and sister Rebecca. I guess we're, if you can exit the door, all those that's going to come uh, to junior church. And we're going to have Brother Frank come at this time. The most important part of the message is the preaching of God's Word. <coughs> Just thank you for filling in for the pastor. I bless Lord, you, man. We Lord love bless you. you, brother. Happy yeah. Pops Day. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Well, happy Father's Day to all you fathers. And uh, I'm going to take time to read a little card that I got this morning. Listen to this. To be a great dad, you have to be brilliant, brave, strong, and smart. Kind and caring, having a big heart. Wise and wonderful funny and fun, hardworking, helpful, getting any job done. Wow, that's a lot to ask of any one man, but if anyone can do it, my dad can. My daughter gave me that card this morning. <laughs> well, God bless you folks. It's good to be in the good Lord's house. And uh, if, you know how, if you know how to pray, you add to this service by asking the Lord to have His will done. Now, if His will is done, you know what's going to happen? All of us people that are saved will snuggle up closer to the Lord and love Him like He asked us to. He said you should love the Lord with all your soul, mind, and strength. He said this is a great commandment. If we could do that, if we'd always put him first, see? Everything else would work out. So if you know how to pray, you talk to the Lord and ask him to help us in this service. Now, I'm gonna to go to Lamentations, and if you don't really know your Bible real good, you won't even be able to find it. It's a little bitty book. But if you'd open your Bible about halfway up, you'd be in Psalms, and you go Isaiah, Jeremiah and Lamentations. Find your place if you can in Lamentations. I'm going to the third chapter. And uh, I preached for a long time and never did get a hold of this verse until recently. It's found in chapter three of Lamentations, verse 22. Listen real careful. I'm going to go read two verses there. Now remember, according to the scriptures, sin entered in by Adam, and so death came for all of us are sinners. The wages of sin is death. We're hell deserving sinners. But because of God's mercy, we're not consumed. Listen to this, and I hope you found your place. It says in verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I don't know how the Lord put, puts up with me because I deserve hell. But if we accept him, he gives us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. It's all in him. So what I'm gonna deal with is two little thoughts that I, in these verses, mercies. I'm gonna deal with that just a little bit. And then why is mercy? Because of his love, his compassion. That's two things I'm gonna kinda of try to get over to you. In Psalms 136, when you think about mercy, if you've got a Bible, turn over there. Psalms 136. <clears throat> the reason I'm taking you over here, it's, it's astonishing, really. Psalms 136 <clears throat> said, Give thanks 
unto the Lord, for he is good. He's good all the time. He's good all the time. For his mercies, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks unto God of God's, for his mercy endures forever. If you read down through all these verses, 26 times he said his mercies endures forever. But now remember, he's talking to his people here. If you're here and you've not accepted the Lord, his mercy is not going to endure forever. It's enduring for you right now, but when you die, if you die without receiving the Lord, you'll have no more mercy. You go to the lake of fire, it's called a second death. Tormented day and night forever and ever. You'd think if anybody's got a lick of sense, they wouldn't reject the Lord, wouldn't you? But see, if you don't believe what this says, you won't never accept him. Now here's one of the biggest problems. The devil deceives people and blinds their minds to the truth. He's gonna tell you, well, you believe in Jesus, but that's a head belief. If you've never received him, you, you're not a Christian. You can't be, you can't go to heaven without new birth. The only way the new birth can happen is you receive the Lord. Bible said he came to his own, they received him not, but to as many as received him. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Why? Because they're born again when they receive Jesus. So the devil will tell you when we give the invitation, you say, oh, you believe. But if you haven't accepted him, you don't really believe. You only have a head belief. And God looks up on the heart, the Bible says. And so I'm praying that when we give invitation, that you'll just do what you know is right. Because the Bible said, if you know to do good and won't do it, it's sin. If you know you ought to be saved, it's a sin for you to go on without being saved, without accepting the Lord. And so I'm praying and trusting that the good Lord will help us in that. Uh, there's a couple of verses that ties in with this mercies in the New Testament is found in uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two says, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you give your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. He said, this is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but transformed in the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. See, but because of the mercies of God, we ought to say, Lord, I need you. I don't want to die without you. And so I'm praying and trusting that uh, you will turn to the Lord. Now, the other thought in that reading was, uh, why do we have his mercies? Because his compassions fail not. So that's what I'm going to talk about now. Go to the New Testament with, with me, if you would, uh, Matthew 22. Matthew 22. It's got a couple of verses I want to read to you there about love. If you go to that uh, Matthew 22, look at verse uh, 36. This is a lawyer that's come to Jesus and this is what he said to Jesus. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Mind. He said, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So we'll come back on those thoughts in a minute, but I want you to go to John 13:34 reason I'm turning to these scriptures with you, I believe that if you see it, it'll mean more to you. If you go to that 13th chapter, go to verse 34. Now remember, we just had two commandments given to us. The first was love the Lord, 
with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He said, this is a great commandment. And then he said, the second is love your neighbor as yourself. Now look at this one. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love one to another. So we're going to talk about love a little bit and give invitation. How about John 3.16? Probably everybody in here could quote that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But now the next verse says, God did not send his Son to condemn us but to save us. Then the next verse says, he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not condemned already. Why? Because he hasn't believed. Now when he says believe, he's talking about believing in your heart. He's not talking about this a head knowledge. Every, everybody believes in, in Jesus in that he is a, existed. Everybody believes that in their mind, but that don't mean you've accepted him and received him that you might be born again. That's, that's what I'm trying to get to you. We need to, every one of us, uh, believe it so much that we'll not be ashamed, and that we'll confess him openly and publicly and prove our faith by the way we live. That's what we need to do, be doing. That's what uh, Romans 12 was all about there. But because of the mercies of God, give yourself over to the Lord. He said, this is your reasonable service. Don't be like the world. Don't keep going to Broadway, but you be transformed and the renewing of your mind. Start getting that. See, there's only two ways, a broad way and a narrow way. And the broad way, the Bible said, leads to, to eternal destruction. But uh, God's way, which is a straight and narrow, leads to life. If you build your house on a rock, the floods will come and the rains and the wind, but the house is stand because it's got the foundation. Jesus is the rock. We need to come to him and start building on that foundation. Because if you build on sinking sand, that's a broad way. He said that house will fall and great will be the fall of it. So, as we think about that great commandment, though, that I, I read to you there in Matthew 22, why would uh, he, he say this is the great commandment? You see, if you just lived in the light of that one, you love your neighbor, you love the family of God through thick and thin. He said, Jesus said, love. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, all men will know you're my disciples. If we live in the light of the great commandment, means we'll put him first. And when you put Jesus first, you'll love your neighbor and you'll love God's people. I'm 91 years old now and I don't even feel like coming to church. But because I love Jesus, I want to try to be an example to younger Christians. Now, as I look back over my life, listen closely. If it hadn't been for some of the older preachers that loved God enough to put him first, I probably never would have mattered to nothing as a Christian. There was one old preacher, some of you might know him. His name was Charlie Ashcraft. He was the greatest example to me than anybody ever was. He taught evangelism where I went to a preacher's school. And uh, he would come in and every, every day he'd come in and he'd sing us a little chorus. Now the Bible says in Isaiah, uh, chapter 9 and verse 6, 
It says, call, referring to Jesus, they call his name Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Brother Ashcraft, he'd sing that, a little song about that every once in a while. I'm gonna sing it to you. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, tis recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? That's so true. The Lord is good all the time. And so I'm praying and trusting that you'll get help today. I know the Holy Ghost, his job is to bring conviction upon us and then to comfort us and to teach us all things. And if we lean on him, if we'll accept the Lord, see, that's what happens is the love of God comes in. It's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. That's what Romans 5 tells us. If we'll accept him, he said, I will come in. And if I come in, I'll never cast you out. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I'm gonna tell you something that I thought was pretty good. There was an old preacher from Tennessee. His name was Roy Godby. And uh, he was preaching over there uh, at Brother Foster's church, Emmanuel Baptist over in Florence, Kentucky. And he told us a story about, he said, I was in Tennessee trying to have a revival several years ago and he said, uh, we were halfway through the week and he said, there wasn't nothing happening. He said, I saw no man come in. He said, I was already in the pulpit and I saw him come in the front door. And he said, I knew that man was a prayer warrior. He said, so I called his name and said, would you come up here and pray for this revival? He said, old man came up and laid down on the altar, laid down on his back. And he said, help. Got up and went back, sat down. He said, revival broke out that night. See, the Bible teaches that God is not interested in somebody that says long prayers to be heard. But he is a very present help in trouble. And that's what we need. All of us need help because we have the sin nature. And the Bible says we need to fight a good faith and say no to sin, self, and Satan, and yes to the Savior. We need to learn this. As God's little youngins, we need to learn that we are not to forsake the assembly. Now, one reason why I'm preaching this is because I listen to prayer. When people praise, I try to listen, see what they're saying. I ain't never heard nobody except myself. I, I pray this way a lot of times. I say, Lord, help me to love you like I ought to. Help me to love my neighbor like I ought to. Help me to love the brethren like I ought to. I ain't never heard nobody pray like that. But that is the greatest thing that we should pray about. Remember what, what I read there in Matthew 22, verse 37, it said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the great commandment. That means we put him first. And if we put him first, the reason why it's great, everything else will fall in place. We put him first. There's a verse over in Hebrews 10 says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhort one another so much more as you see the day approaching. The day approaching is talking about Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, it'd be too late for us to do anything because we'd be caught out in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. 
And this whole corruptible body will put on incorruption, this whole mortal spirit will put on immortality, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? He said, the sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God that gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, one reason I'm preaching this is because there's a verse, and I want you to really ask the Lord to help you get a hold of this. The verse is uh, Matthew 24, 12. It says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Do you think iniquity is abounding? Iniquity talks about sin and gross sin. That's abounding. We're killing millions of little babies. That's innocent. I don't know how in the world God's putting up with this. This is, I, I cannot believe it. Schools got to where they won't have prayer. They're trying to outlaw everything that's good. I, I can't hardly believe how the Lord's so long suffering. Oh, the love of many is wax cold. Let, let me kind of give you an illustration. I pastored a church in Carthage for 38 years. And the Lord blessed us. We were able to build a nice big church house. And uh, I had about, my memory's not perfect, but I knew it was over 300 members. But do you know how many was coming? Around 100. Now what does that mean? That means that two thirds of that church didn't love the Lord enough to even come to church. Well, I started looking around and John Rollins, he was the biggest preacher back in my, my early preaching days. He was the biggest preacher in the United States. He had a church in, uh, out towards Evendale it's called Landmark Baptist. I heard him say, we got over 5,000 members, but there's only 2,000 coming. And I started checking in every church. I asked Marvin, and Marvin didn't know. I said, how many members does the Bible Baptist have? He said, I'm not sure. And then I told him what I'm telling you, that usually about two, th two thirds of, of the members won't come. He said, I, I've heard that too. He said, I don't know how many members we got, but I, I would, I'm going to ask Brother Hart and find out. We probably got a hundred people here today, a little over. But I would say this church has got 300 or more on the books. And that means the love of many has waxed cold. Lord, help us to start praying. See, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. I never do hear nobody praying that the Lord will help us to love him like we ought to and to love our neighbor and to love his people especially as he loves us. That's through thick and thin, no matter what. And so people, I'm hoping and praying that the Holy Ghost will touch your heart and if you need to move up, it's a sin. If you know to do good and won't do it, we need to turn from sin and self and Satan and turn to the Lord. You know, the Bible teaches time and again, without repentance, you can't be saved. And I found out that uh, I repented when I was about 17, a little over 17 years old. I repented of the fact that I had been rejecting Jesus, I accepted him. That was the starting of repentance right there. But I've re been repenting all the time ever since that. That means turn from self.
See, repentance seems to mean you turn. It's a turning. It's an about faith. And every day, we need to say, Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's talking about God's perfect will. And every one of us is on earth. So we're praying that the Lord will help us to put him first. Love him like we ought to so that we can love our neighbor and love God's people through thick and thin. Now I'm going to close. I don't even know what time it is. But I'm going to close in just a minute. But here's what I want to get over. There's only two kind of people in here this morning. You're either saved or lost. You're either still on the broad way that leads to destruction or you've accepted the Lord and he has put you on the straight and narrow. But the Bible teaches, and I was looking at it today, Matthew 12, 30 said, if you're not for me, you're against me. That means if you're here today and you haven't acknowledged the Lord and received him, you're against him. The devil, devil don't want you to see that. But I'm telling you this morning, if you're not saved, you ought to come because Jesus is going to come back and get us any day. And if you're here and you are saved and you're not snuggled up to the Lord, you need to come and say, Lord, forgive me and help me to do better. I've been there and done that. And so I'm praying that today we're going to have an invitation. I'm praying that you, you will just do what you know is right. And if you do that, you please the Lord. And God will be able to use you to the praise of his glory. I'm going to say one more thing for a close. The shortest chapter in the Bible. I want to get some commitments on this. It's only two verses. How many of you will say, I'll try to memorize the shortest chapter in the Bible? Two verses. How many of you will try to memorize it? Let me see. Well, that's about 10 of you. If you do that, you're going to be a greater Christian. It's Psalms 117, shortest chapter in the Bible. Oh, praise the Lord. And what got me thinking about this, they sang a song that we should praise the Lord. He said, oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people. Why? For his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise you, the Lord. If you memorize that, it'll help you to be a better Christian. And so as we stand and sing an invitation, if you need to come, Jesus wants you to do the best you know. If you know you ought to come, please come. Don't rebel against the Lord. As we stand, I'll have a, a short prayer and we'll sing the verse of invitation. Heavenly Father, I pray 